Guys, I thought today's project was going to be pretty uneventful. Wasn't even going to video it. I got some new shoes here for Johnny. I'll talk to more about that in a minute. But uh, as I dove into this, this is the old auction tractor, the old 3520. Yeah, got a pretty serious problem. Not happy about that, but I'll show you more in detail. Let's get started. Okay, this is the frame here where the cab attaches to the main transaxle here. And this has been all hit with salt over the years. So I've, I, I scraped a lot of this salt off and chipped a bunch of the steel off. I've got a little left here just to show you kind of what it looks like here. These are the, the chips that, that come off. It's like quarter inch thick. But there's still plenty of steel here. I'm really not too concerned about that. Yeah, I'm gonna have to, gonna have to get this all cleaned up, I think, and and painted somehow. That's that's an issue that's got to be dealt with. But that's not my biggest concern here. My biggest concern is. Oh look, I can actually get in there. My biggest concern is uh, an item that several viewers warned me about after we purchased the tractor. They said that where this steel comes together with the aluminum housing here, if you get salt and all in there, it can corrode and actually wear all the way through or corrode all the way through this aluminum housing here and make it where you can get water down into your uh, in, into your hydraulic reservoir, right? So the, the the axle runs out through here. There's hydraulic oil all the way out to this seal. Having not seen where this occurred, I wasn't sure whether it happened under here somewhere. Uh, again, I've just now got to where I can get back in here. I wasn't sure where this this contact was was taking place, where the bad items were. But one area that did seem really bad. I mean, this was caked full of dirt and you know, all kinds of grime and stuff. It's almost impossible to wash in here. Uh, when the tires are on, they come all the way in to this area right here. So this, you can't even hardly see this from the outside, let alone power wash in here or anything. But these holes here, they go right down onto that aluminum transaxle or, or the outside axle housing here. And Randall suggested I use these picks. I, I wasn't using anything this small. He suggested I use these picks to go in here and check this out. Well, I did. I got to working with this today. And he said, see how far you can insert the pick. Look at this. I kept working with it. Now, it was, it was full of gunk and stuff like that, but I kept working with it until I could go that deep. Yeah. That is not positive, right? That's a good inch and a half, two inches deep. Even worse, I stick it down there and I move this hub here and I can feel it. So where it does stop is right there on the axle. So this has corroded all the way through. Not good news. Not good news at all. Any guesses on how much this axle housing is? The, the good news is it's not the entire transaxle. This is a three-piece axle housing. The, this piece that I would have to get, it goes right into here. Somewhere here is the, the splice, right? So all of this would have to be replaced. Yeah, guesses? I believe I saw $2,361 for this axle housing here. And not only that, it doesn't look to me like it's gonna be very easy to replace. I'm looking for shortcuts. So I've talked it over with a few folks, several ideas. Uh, we've talked about just pumping this full of silicone. Can we get this sealed off to where water can't get down in there? There's not going to be any pressure up against this. It will have oil up against it and it will be, you know, somewhat hot. The, the oil will get to 200, 230 degrees, something like that, but it's not going to, you know, there's not going to be pressure. Another approach that's been suggested is to cut a bolt off. 
just a bolt like this and stick it in there and then weld all the way around it. All right? Could I weld that in both of those and get that sealed off enough that what I could make it waterproof? Now, you're right. When you're seeing me scrape this, this is probably now going down into the transaxle. I'll just have to change the oil when we get done with this, but I don't see any way I can keep it out of there in general. The filter will catch a lot of it, of course, but uh, I, don't, I don't see any way I can keep it out of there. So yeah, once we get done with the project, we will just have to change the fluid. Another way that I could, could weld it is I could, I could put a, you know, a little piece of steel right on top of it here, all the whole width. And I don't know which would be easiest for me to weld and to get waterproof. It probably doesn't have to be perfection on the waterproofing. Again, there's no pressure. And I just have to, in general, keep water out of it, right? Because there's not going to be much water coming in there. Maybe only from a pressure washer and then <laughs> only in uh, certain scenarios. So probably doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm wondering if being able to get around the hex bolt and weld all sides of the hex bolt, especially way back in here, if that's going to be too hard for me, if it would be easier to, to, to put a piece along the whole top here. I'm not sure which would be easiest at this point. Meanwhile, I guess I'll start grinding, see if I can get this kind of smoothed off. It's got a lot of pitting in here. This is, this is pretty rusted out. I've got one photo from Tom and Randall's tractor. They, the, the tire's still on, so you can't, you can't get this angle. Um, but all of this is definitely in better shape than in this tractor. Now, the left-hand side of this tractor, I believe, is worse than the right-hand side. I, I believe there was a spinner spreader on the back of this tractor to spread salt and it would throw it toward the left-hand side and into the left-hand rim and then into this left-hand support here. The, certainly the rim on the tire is much more rusted out on the left-hand side than on the right-hand side. So I'm hopeful I don't have the right-hand side all the way corroded through, but I think I'll still do the fix to both sides if this is a fix. I'd be interested in hearing your opinions in the comments section, of course, Hopefully I'll already be done with it by the time I get your comments, but still relevant to know whether you think I'm going to be able to solve this. My theory is that all of this is sealed around here. If nothing else, the corrosion has sealed it, right? So the steel to cast aluminum is tightly sealed around here. I took these bolts out yesterday just to see if I could, and I can get them out. I had them out yesterday, but I cannot get this to separate, at least... I can't yet. I might have to like take the entire cab off to be able to get it to even move. I thought I could get it to maybe to move a little bit, but it it seems to have, I'm going to use the term welded itself together here with the, the corrosion between those two. And um, th that may actually work to my advantage because I think if we can just get these holes blocked, no water will be able to get in there. Well, if we were stick welding, dad might just weld it like it is, but with MIG, which is about all I can do, you got to get that shined up. I'm going to see if I can get some of this blue towel stuff down in the hole. And I'll have to have less than that, won't I? I'm not worried about this one. It's uh, not all the way through. I'm going to be wanting to paint all of this anyway, so I might as well. Ah, it's just a little surface rust. Here's a close-up of that surface. Uh, maybe it wasn't clean enough yet. And here's the first specially modified bolt. That's a good illustration of how deep that hole goes. And here's the other side. I just cut this bolt off since the hole wasn't as deep and actually it went faster to cut it off anyway. 
I've got a lot of light on here, more for me to be able to see than for you actually. Here, maybe that doesn't make me look quite so pale. If you've been watching our channel for a long time, you know that I'm not an experienced welder. Um, so let me talk through why I think I can weld this. First, it's flat. So everything is going to be horizontal here, right? Uh, the worst part for me is going to be the backside. Of course, I'll have this magnet taken off as soon as I get it tacked. But I think I can get to this. I can actually get under here. I believe I'm going to be able to see everything. I think that's the most difficult part for me. But since the welding is flat, I think we'll be fine. I used hex head bolts, as you can see here. Neighbor Chris suggested I use carriage head bolts, and that might have made it a little easier to see to the back side. Probably would have been wise, but I didn't have carriage head bolts, and I didn't want to run and get any. Again, that's why I like to have the uh, stocked bolts on hands for just situations like this. Well, maybe not exactly like this, right? I typically don't expect to cut them off, but it sure beats uh, taking an hour, hour and a half to, to go. Time you make the round trip, check out and everything, it, it, it's a long time. And yeah, the upfront cost is there, but it's not so bad with the heavyhitch.com bolt collection because we have a small number of each size. So yeah, you can go check out. I think they, they list them as bolt bins. Of course, the bolts are included. Um, heavyhitch.com, use code TTWT to save 5%. By the way, it's getting to be springtime. It's a good time to look at your rear ballast options. Heavy Hitch itself. You've got front tooth bars that you might need from Heavy Hitch. Um, yeah, go check out their product line. I, I think you'll like what they have to offer. Hope you can still hear me well. I'm going to try to start by just tacking it right here on the front. Easy spot to see. And uh, then I can remove that magnet here after one or two tacks. Okay, I'm going to start on these hard parts first. It's popping. I wonder if I'm too hot. I'm not going to win any awards as a welder at least on this project, but I'm pretty sure I got this sealed up. Okay, I'll chip off some of my bad places. I may not be a star welder, but I actually think I'm gonna get this sealed up pretty nicely, really. Too much spatter, I messed something up there. I, I don't know how to set the welder settings, I'll be honest. Uh, there's, you know, it, it tells you, uh, settings based on the thickness of the steel you're welding. Well, is that both pieces of steel? Is that one piece of steel? You know, this is half inch, but should I set the settings for half inch or should I set them more for the size of the bolt that I put in there, you know? I don't have any experience. I don't have any education on that. And no, I don't have time to watch all the welding YouTubers. I'd like to, um, to be able to learn what's going on, but uh, that's where I am. So don't watch this show to learn how to weld, but do watch this show if you want to figure out just how to get by, how to be able to boldly tackle some projects. I really didn't see this as critical welding, right? This is just to try to seal this up. We're not really trying to hold anything. I'm comfortable with this. I'll use a wire brush here and power wire brush and get this cleaned up a little bit and I might even spray it with a little paint yet today before I uh, cover it up. Well, there's a few topics I could talk about here more broadly. One is that recently we published some videos, and of course we have these one in a hundred or one in two hundred commenters that come on and and just you know say, oh, we're, we're we we just hate TYM or clearly we're biased or or whatever. We we never say anything good or we never say anything bad about deer is what they'll say. Well. What am I doing today? I mean, this is a deer machine. Um, this design clearly has some challenges to it. It's not been fixed, or at least these holes have not been removed on the, on the new tractors. But on the other hand, is it an issue? I don't know. I mean, this tractor has had uh, a lot of salt in its life. 
and I believe it was a spinner, and it was spinning, I think, rotating this direction, throwing salt into this left-hand side. Yeah, this is the left-hand side of the tractor if you're sitting in the driver's seat. The other side doesn't look as bad, at least on the outside. We'll get to it in a little while. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is an example of something that has gone wrong with this steer tractor. Of course, it's got 3,650 hours on it, right? So it's, it's not a new tractor. I, I don't know how to be any more honest in my views and my representation of the channel. And, uh, and we do have opinions on the topic that we've been talking about recently, rebranded tractors. and. Who really makes these tractors? I, I, I think it's important that somebody discuss this. Um, so uh, I'm going to do it, I guess. And uh, I, I don't believe it takes away from, from who we are as a channel. In fact, I think it's just the opposite. We're willing to try our best to help people understand what's going on in the tractor world. We don't mean to insult anyone who has purchased a tractor from a brand that we've we've shown as rebranded I, I, that that's not our intent at all i mean I, I don't intend to even insult those i just want people to know what they're purchasing and and uh, try to try to make decisions based on that there is risk in every purchase right i mean there there's risk in it doesn't matter what brand of tractor you buy there's going to be risk in parts availability in the long run so we have to try to evaluate that across the different brands, across the different situations, every one of these is going to be different. <laughs> A grinder and paint make me the welder. I ain't. What do you think? I think it's what we're gonna to get today. I'll put this tire on, we'll see what the other side has to offer. Now we're on the right side. Remember, I didn't show you the left side because I really didn't know I was even gonna be showing any of this on video, so that's why you didn't see it. But I wanted to show you the right side to give you a little indication of what it looked like before I cleaned it up. Unfortunately, there's not near as much gunk in here. The right side was piled up, this entire triangle area here. Triangle is probably not the right word, but it was all full. This, of course, is, you know, kind of full in here, but it was all full. The other thing is, this is not rusted out nearly as bad as the other side. Not nearly as much of the surface is gone. I can actually still see some paint here. So this is, this looks much better. Yeah, I can chip the paint off here. That's no big deal, but I was chipping off. Well, okay, we're seeing a little bit there, but I was chipping off like a quarter of an inch of, you know, rusted steel. And I don't mean a quarter of an inch um, of original steel. I mean that it's bubbled up to such that it's a quarter inch thick. That's what I meant on the other side. Now you might ask why I'm not using air yet. I've got that thing stuck in there. And the answer is that once I start using air, it's a mess and it gets all over me and everything around me. And so I'm gonna try to get as much as I can off before I use the air. Again, this side's not nearly as bad. It was all full all the way in here. I mean, there's some in there, I realize, but it was just, it was full all in there on the other side. And I don't know when that gathered in there. It might have been while I was using it this fall, or maybe it didn't ever get washed up from before. It's hard to know. This is really hard to see with the tires on. No, I'm not in the screen because I'm about three feet away. It's like washing something. You don't necessarily want to be real close. This thing's been in the fishing line at some point. That's probably not good on those seals. You can't see it, I realize, but I'll get it out here in a minute where you can. It's fishing line, or maybe it's, maybe it's that nylon from uh, when they 
when they sow grass and they put down those mats. In any case, it's no fun to have around the axle here. Isn't there a phrase about being wrapped around the axle or something? What does that mean? What is the phrase and what does it mean? Help me out in the comments section below. Eh, not good at all, but a little of it. Okay, now, can you see that in there? Already seeing white. What is that? Is that salt right there? You know, is that the corrosion? Is it rocks? It could be limestone, you know, out of... Because this, this tractor's apparently did a lot of limestone work. One of the things that the prior owner said that it did, they ran the blade on it almost all the time. By the way, they did run the blade on the front almost all the time, as I'm saying here, and I think that's probably what caused the tie rod ends to wear out as early as they did. But the reason they used the blade in the summertime was along the side of the road where they put the, the rock border, at least here in the Midwest, a lot of time they'll put crushed stone right along the side of the, the, the shoulder of the road. Uh, and they would use this tractor to, to push the remaining rock. That if, if some of it fell on the road, they would use it to, to push the remaining rock off to the side. So it's possible this is that limestone in there. It's also possible that that's corrosion. I just don't know. I don't understand why these holes are here. It seems like uh, they're just in the way and they're just waiting for problems, right? I mean, it seems to me like these holes are, are gonna cause more problems than they're ever gonna solve. I don't know if they're there for some manufacturing reason. Now this actually looks really good. I don't, compared to the other side, this looks really good. Now I'm still out a lot deeper than I am out here. But when I looked at the part online, it looked to me like that uh, the aluminum piece may, may go down a little bit. So maybe it's not a problem that I'm in an inch deep here. It's, it does not feel soft at all. And, but I don't go in as far out here. I think the net result is this is in good shape. Not nearly as rusty. Yeah, the paint is coming off there. Even though this is in a lot better shape, I think I'm going to go through the same steps on this side. I don't see any reason to show you in, in the same detail, so I'll just show you when we're all done. I turned the heat down a little bit this time, and uh, I didn't melt the tops of the heads all the way off, but I think I've got it you know, sealed good enough for me. Again, I'm not going to win any awards for my welding, but uh, I think I've done good enough. now. The question overall becomes, will this fix the problem? Again, on this side, we didn't experience the problem yet, right? So will it prevent the problem, I guess, is a better way of saying it on this side. Well, overall, I think this one looks a little bit better than the other one. Well, I mean, it started out better than the other one, but my welding job and my painting job are also, I think, a little bit better. Practice makes better. Okay, so the old 3520 has some new shoes. It wasn't exactly my plan to put R1 tires on this tractor, but I don't have time in this episode, really, I don't think, to go into a lot of that detail. I'll give you just one sentence, and that is that I got a smoking deal on these tires from my local AHW dealer. So I uh, took them. I want to talk in more depth about these R1 tires advantages, disadvantages. Um, there's some special features of these rims that I want to talk about as well, but I just don't have time in this episode. What do you think? Do you think the weld that I did to plug that hole, uh, you think that's going to keep the aluminum housing protected such that it doesn't get dirt in there or water in there? I think it will. Uh, the two or three people that I've talked to for advice, you know, the phone a friend kind of concept, they're fairly confident as well. So I, I, I feel good about this, but I am interested in your comments. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. We're getting close on this tractor. I've got a few more things to do, but I must be honest, that was one of the big ones. I was really worried uh, about those aluminum housings and sure enough, one of them had corroded all the way through. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. 
Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? I wish I had a little better light. Now that's probably got the light in your visibility. No? Let me turn it up a little bit then. How's that? <laughs> oh, that's a big help for me.